August 15th, 1977. It was just about a quarter past 10 when an astronomer volunteering his time at Ohio State University was performing routine data collection from the university's observatory. By that point, the observatory was largely controlled remotely, amassing several days worth of data that was stored on a computer for as long as several days before it ran out of space. The volunteer's name was Jerry Emmon, and he was there alone to read the printouts of all the data that the telescope had collected before resetting it to a new point in the sky. As he was working, he glanced at the printouts that Big Ear had produced and paused in shock when he saw a curious sequence of letters and numbers. He circled the sequence and scribbled the word WOW in the margin. What Emin had discovered was so significant it was considered by some to be the greatest candidate for real evidence of intelligent life beyond Earth. Emin's discovery was dubbed the WOW signal and it remains to this day a huge mystery to scientists and astronomers across the world. In this episode, we'll examine the scientific community's reaction to this mysterious signal and the leading theory surrounding it. Join me as we take a closer look at this enigmatic frequency that traveled from the infinite vastness of space to reach humankind. I'm James Troop, and this is Haunting History. The technology of Ohio State's Big Ear Telescope was considered impressive for the time. The observatory is located on campus at Ohio State University Radio Observatory, or OSORO, and it was first constructed in the late 1950s. The telescope was built in the Krauss style of telescope, named after Dr. John D. Krauss, a professor emeritus at the university and founder of OSORO. Dr. Krauss was also a renowned pioneer of radio astronomy, and the purpose of his namesake telescope was to create the most accurate radio map of the sky to date. The telescope was so large that it exceeded the area of three football fields. The radio signals, or electromagnetic waves, that the telescope read were measured in hertz, which is the number of wave cycles transmitted per second. The telescope had huge feed horns that could funnel these radio signals from the telescope's large reflector to its receiver. It was constructed for about $250,000 at the time, with funding from the National Science Foundation and labor from undergraduate and graduate students who were brought on to help build it. Dr. Krauss commented on the construction saying, the whole idea was a maximum size for a dollar cost. It achieved that objective. It was designed for mapping the radio sky and it has been successful in finding the most distant known objects in the universe. Big Ear would go on to discover some of the most distant known celestial objects. This included a variety of phenomena from near the edge of the known universe, such as quasars, which are incredibly bright objects that emit intense radiation and are thought to be powered by massive black holes. However, in 1972, Big Ear lost its federal funding. Despite this, the observatory was still able to continue operating, but had to shift its academic mission. The astronomers of Osoro were going to look for the ultimate catch in the astronomical world, evidence of extraterrestrial intelligence. They began a SETI project, or Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, on December 7th, 1973, and it would later become the longest search in history. Dr. Krauss described the switch in their academic mission, which was one of the earliest of its kind, saying, There was no fuss or fanfare. Switches were set, recorders started, and the data began to flow. With so little funding, however, they had to cut down on operations overall, and their research 
even relied on the labor of volunteer staff. Nobody could fathom at the time that one of these volunteers would make Big Ear's most famous space discoveries just four years later. Coming from somewhere near the direction of the constellation Sagittarius, the narrowband wow signal lasted for a full 72 seconds and was 30 times more powerful than the radio hum in the background from the rest of the sky. The signal was literally off the charts and came in at 1,420 megahertz. There were many things about the wow signal that intrigued scientists. Narrowband radio signals are a type of signal not usually found in nature, but rather associated with a range of frequencies similar to man-made artificial signals. Additionally, this region of radio frequencies is considered to be a region that is usually free of noise from other objects. Emin immediately knew that what he had discovered was significant, saying, It didn't take long for me to recognize that this was extremely interesting, and the word wow came to my mind very quickly, so I wrote it down. He later went on to say it was the most significant thing we had seen. He quickly alerted the team who began to investigate the signal. The radio frequency was one that had been specifically forbidden for use by anyone in the global population, except in cases of astronomical observations, which allowed the team to quickly rule out anything of terrestrial origin or satellite broadcast. At the time, the U value of the sequence was the largest ever recorded. The signal was at a frequency that was very close to what is emitted when neutral hydrogen produces light. Why were scientists excited by this possible hydrogen-produced light in this case? Based on the availability of hydrogen as a resource, this radio frequency has long been associated with the possibility of extraterrestrial interstellar transmission. In simpler terms, scientists posit that if there is indeed extraterrestrial life, they would also have to know of hydrogen's presence in space, especially if they had the ability and technological means to communicate by transmitting radio signals. Emin continued to comb through the data set for days after and was surprised that the signal never reappeared. They brought his observations to an equally excited observatory director and staff, including Dr. Krauss. The wow signal discovery was a catalyst for a wider search of the sky with more sensitive instruments, in addition to searching through the area of space from which the signal came. Dr. Krauss wrote a letter to fellow astronomer Carl Sagan saying, the wow signal is highly suggestive of extraterrestrial intelligent origin, but little more can be said until it returns for further study. Emin and the observatory staff continued to observe that same spot in the sky for over a month without any new information to help them locate the source. And because it never returned, there was little evidence to continue the study. The signal source had seemingly vanished as suddenly as it had appeared. The search continued for another year, which turned into several decades of searching. After a 22-year mission, Big Ear ceased operation in 1977 and the university sold the land to real estate developers. The observatory was torn down in 1998 and the land where it once stood was used to expand a nearby golf course. As the years went by, the wow signal remained as mysterious as ever to Emin and the other astronomers. Additionally, even after years of study, Emin says that past a certain distance, it's very difficult to pinpoint exactly how far a radio signal such as this may be transmitting. As of today, nothing like it was ever observed again. There have since been numerous studies within the astronomy community with plausible explanations for the wow signal, but none have been definitively proven. However, recent advancements in technology 
have brought astronomers closer to solving a number of previously mysterious phenomena in space. For example, for years, scientists were puzzled by enigmatic events known as fast radio bursts, or FRBs. These brief but incredibly bright radio pulses last only a fraction of a second, yet they've been found in distant galaxies across the universe. They were once thought to be singular strong radio signals rather than multiple signals in quick succession. And it wasn't until recently that a source was discovered. Astronomers observed that some neutron stars, which are the compact cores of massive stars after their deaths, had huge magnetic fields about a hundred million times stronger than any human-made magnet. Astronomers dubbed these supermagnetic neutron stars as magnetars. They're so strong, in fact, that if a person were to travel within a thousand kilometers of a magnetar's magnetic field, they would rip away the electrons from the atoms of their body, essentially dissolving them on a molecular level. There's still a lot about magnetars that remain unknown to astronomers, but they've recently discovered that they're capable of occasionally releasing giant flares of radiation across the electromagnetic spectrum. As such, some theorized that the FRBs could be originating from flaring magnetars in distant galaxies. But it's still unknown whether the WOW signal was in fact an FRB rather than a singular powerful radio signal. Other theories pointed out that the telescope could have glitched or malfunctioned in some way. Seth Shostak, senior astronomer at the SETI Institute, explains that this could have easily been a reflection of the primitive technology at the time. In those days, it was very common to pick up these kinds of signals just one time. Computers didn't have the power to do real-time follow-ups. It's true that once the technology had improved, there were fewer instances of mystery signals, but there was no way to definitively prove that the wow signal was a result of a glitch. In 2017, astronomer Antonio Paris published a paper hypothesizing that the signal may have something to do with the comet known as 266 P. Christensen. The comet wasn't discovered until 2006, but Paris was able to calculate its position in 1977 and found it was around the same area as where the WOW signal came from. He observed the comet as it reappeared in orbit, passing Earth on a similar course in 2017, only about two degrees north of the WOW signal location. Furthermore, Paris observed other comets with the radio telescope and found that they could emit radio signals at 1,420 megahertz, the same frequency as the WOW signal. The comets emitted these waves when they traveled near the sun, causing a reaction with the gases surrounding them. Paris concluded that under these conditions, comets could be the source of these mystery frequencies. However, many in the scientific community have their reservations about this theory, including Jerry Emmon. He believed that a comet couldn't produce that kind of signal because the gases surrounding them are diffused over a large area. Moreover, the Christensen comet moves at a rate that people can perceive, so it couldn't have escaped the radio telescope's field, meaning it would have shown up on the readings as an identifiable signal. Shostak also pointed out that no other studies prove that comets could emit at the 1,420 megahertz range because they likely don't have enough hydrogen to produce a signal that intense. An additional recent theory was posed in 2020 by amateur astronomer Alberto Caballero, who had been studying new research and data collected by the Gaia Space Observatory, whose research seeks to compile a 3D map of the galaxy. As of 2020, Gaia had mapped as many as 1.3 billion stars, planets, comets, 
asteroids, and quasars across the universe, giving astronomers the most complete map of the galaxy to date. Using their map, Caballero began to look for sun-like stars, or stars that had similar temperature, radius, and luminosity to our own sun within the same region that the WOW signal had originated. He found one possible candidate that had all three traits matching our sun, a sun-like star by the name of Tumas. Caballero's theory was that a flare from Tumas, or possibly another star, too dim to be mapped by current technology, was the source of the signal. However, Caballero notes that more research and further evidence is needed to confirm whether the star has other similar conditions to our sun, such as the presence of exoplanets orbiting it. These are all very plausible theories to the phenomena that occurred that summer night in 1977, but there's still no definitive proof as to what or who sent the WOW signal. While these main theories don't involve the possibility of extraterrestrial life, many agree that the possibility can't be ruled out. There are some people who believe the WOW signal is still considered a cold case and the top candidate for evidence of extraterrestrial intelligence. Given the size of the universe, the vastness of time, and a general lack of evidence of alien existence, the question of extraterrestrial existence falls into a statistical dilemma known specifically as the Fermi Paradox, which essentially asks, why haven't we encountered aliens despite the size of the universe? It's because of this paradox that mysteries such as the WOW signal continue to be relevant in arguing the case of extraterrestrial life. Scientists agree that if it was aliens that had sent the WOW signal, it would have come from an extremely advanced civilization capable of constructing a 2.2 gigawatt transmitter, which is far more powerful than the capacity of any of Earth's existing radio stations. Shostak spoke to the theory of the signal originating from aliens, saying, Was that E.T.? Or was it not E.T.? Nobody knows. Nobody has ever found another explanation for what that might have been. It's like you hear chains rattling in your attic and you think, my God, ghosts are real. But then you never hear them again. So what do you think? Molly Gallagher, who worked and studied as a graduate research associate in the Department of Astronomy at Ohio State, says of the ongoing fascination, over the years, people have considered different theories, so it sticks around in popular culture and in the scientific mind because it hasn't been explained. There's no explanation I've ever seen that I believe. It doesn't mean it couldn't be aliens. Honestly, I would say I don't know. It's a mystery, and perhaps it will always be a mystery. While Big Ear ended their mission in the 1990s, Others have since picked up the mantle, such as Breakthrough Listen, which is a part of the Breakthrough Initiatives launched by Yuri Milner and Stephen Hawking in 2015 to continue the search for life beyond Earth. Until contact is made again, this mystery will continue to fascinate. Thanks again for joining me in exploring the endless possibilities of the galaxy on this installment of Haunting History.